Hey guys, I'm Samuel. I'm an internationally trained dentist, but I'm a dental student at Megia in Montreal, Canada at the moment. Inflammatory bowel disease. It's one of the most common gut health problem at present. And I believe everyone would agree with me that we all suffer from some form of gut disease. Inflammatory bowel disease could be ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease or intermediate colitis. Intermediate colitis is basically a combination of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. A lot of experts have several tips on improving your gut health and how to prevent inflammatory bowel disease. But the most important key information that they all fail to inform is oral gut access, which plays a huge role in maintaining good gut health. We're going to learn more about that in this video. Stay tuned. Inflammatory bowel disease is an autoimmune disorder, which means your body's immune system, which is supposed to protect you, is attacking your healthy tissues. John Hopkins Medicine website states that there is no permanent cure for inflammatory bowel disease. You can reduce flare ups, you can reduce inflammation. But it is a sad reality that even John Hopkins Medicine website failed to mention the importance of good oral health. There's a critical axis called as the oral gut axis. If there is not a good relationship between your mouth and your gut, no matter what you do, your inflammatory bowel disease is going to get worse because poor oral health can cause inflammatory bowel disease or it can worsen your existing inflammatory bowel disease. You can ask me what's so important about the oral gut axis. First, we have to understand like when you have gum disease, Organisms can enter from your mouth into the body or into the gut through two pathways. The first pathway is through the gums. They enter the bloodstream and they go into the gut. We call it the hematogenous route. The other one is you swallow. You, we swallow at least 1 to 1.5 liters of saliva every day. Just imagine the amount of bacteria present in that saliva which is going in. So they can go into the gut and cause dysbiosis. A lot of research is happening to understand how oral health affects gut health. The study we see here was published in the journal called Cell. They wanted to understand how poor oral health or when you have gum disease, the organisms present in your mouth, how it impacts your gut health. They did the study among mice and they found out that organisms move from the oral cavity into the gut and cause inflammation of the gut. We swallow everything. So whatever is here ultimately goes to your gut. And oral organisms are not designed to survive in your stomach or in your intestine. So when they go inside, these organisms, these microorganisms which cause gum disease, they go and then they cause inflammation of your gut. How do they do that? The first pathway is the direct pathway. In the direct pathway, the organisms go to your gut and cause inflammation of your gut because when you have microorganisms which are not normal in that region your body's immune system tries to fight it and these organisms initiate a reaction a form of chain reaction which causes inflammation therefore inflammatory bowel disease this is the first concept the second one is indirect pathway so when you have gum disease in your mouth your body is still trying to fight all these organisms so they create all this important chemicals to fight the gum disease and you keep swallowing them as well. Once they go inside in the gut, they stay there. The organisms in the gut cannot activate them. But what are you swallowing again along with them? These microorganisms from the gum disease. So when these organisms go to the gut, they activate the chemicals which can cause inflammation which all originated here. So you have to understand either the organisms go inside and cause inflammation or the immune system which is trying to protect your mouth goes inside along with the organisms and the organisms activate these immune chemicals in your gut and cause inflammation. Some of the organisms they have mentioned are Klebsiella and uh, Enterobacter and they are not normally found in the colon and they come from the oral cavity. It's what the research states and they activate specific form of cells called the TH17 cells. Another interesting study from the journal called Science, which evaluated uh, organisms isolated from patients suffering from Crohn's disease. And these organisms were translocated into mice. And what they found was shocking. 
organisms from the oral cavity can live in the gut and cause inflammation of the gut the key organism that they identified was klebsiella and uh, we are seeing this term again and again which is called the th cells this organism called klebsiella in your uh, activated th1 helper cells so what do i mean by th helper cells they play a key role in protecting us from intracellular organisms basically organisms which can invade cells they are highly pathogenic so t helper cells helps to identify them and use other cells to kill them so what when i say to kill them they induce certain cells called cytotoxic t cells they are basically like at a bomb they just keep dropping these bombs and when these organisms activate t helper cells they are also destroying normal tissue that's why inflammatory bowel disease is an autoimmune disorder because in the process of protecting us our immune system is also destroying our gut through inflammation in the study what they found out was campylobacter which is derived from the oral cavity can invade intestinal mucosa which means these bacteria can go into your intestinal tissues and stay there so among the study participants 50% of participants who had crohn's disease had this bacteria from the intestinal sample when you take a biopsy from an intestine among 50% of them this bacteria was there so it adds further more proof that bacteria from the oral cavity can and will go into your intestines or your bowel and can cause inflammation another study they found 53% of the people with crohn's disease had campylobacter in the tissue samples from the gut whereas it was only 18% among people who were healthy so this gives us a stark difference as to what is happening and uh, it's high time to wake up oral health is a critical component of your gut health as well because the entire gut starts from the oral cavity and ends in your rectum not every organism which causes gum disease is linked with inflammatory bowel disease there are certain key pathogens that have been identified through sound research one is klebsiella which i already informed to you and enterobacter was also informed from the paper through cell the first one a strong evidence regarding campylobacter which is a bacteria found in the oral cavity during gum disease this is also present during normal stages but increased levels are found when you have uncontrolled gum disease these organisms are found in very high numbers when you have crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis it is also found among children you have inflammatory bowel disease what research says is that these organisms can invade your muco intestinal mucosal tissues they can penetrate the intestinal mucosa stay there and cause inflammation of your gut these organisms don't belong there but if you have poor oral health this affects your gut and it is proven now lastly this study wanted to understand the relationship between gum disease or periodontal disease and gut dysbiosis dysbiosis basically mean your gut is comprised of certain key organisms they maintain the health of our gut but dysbiosis means an imbalance between harmful bacteria and safe bacteria so what they did was they collected oral samples and fecal samples samples from your poop and they wanted to study how it is different among people who are healthy and those who have gum disease and to evaluate that in real time so when these researchers did this study they found like those who had severe gum disease the microbial profile of the organisms found here were almost similar to those found in the poop i am obviously simplifying the facts for you but i am giving the link for the articles in my description secondly for the healthy people organisms present here comprise of a very minimal percentage of the organisms found in the stool samples also those with severe gum disease there were more representation of oral bacteria in the fecal samples this was not the case for healthy controls how this actually happens is because in gut there is a microbiome we call it the gut microbiome it has a balance between good and the bad bacteria where the good is more and the bad is less so that it's in a symbiotic relationship this also maintains an immune homeostasis that means your body is protecting you at the same time not destroying your good gut tissues but when these oral pathogenic organisms or disease causing organisms which enter from here they go into your gut 
what they do is like they change the balance they change the immune homeostasis now pathogenic or the bad bacteria increases and the good bacteria decreases this causes imbalance and thereby activation of your immune system to attack your body more interestingly these researchers didn't stop there so people who had periodontal disease or advanced gum disease they took the samples isolated the bacteria organisms which cause gum disease and these organisms were put into the mice's oral cavity and these periopathogens caused gut dysbiosis or it disrupted the balance in the gut of the mice so thereby they could also show that in the mice who didn't have any disease when perio organisms or gum disease causing organisms were introduced they can cause gut dysbiosis as well if you are working towards good gut health along with everything else you're doing maintaining good oral health should be your priority as well i hope you found this video useful and uh, you learned something new today if you did i kindly request you to like share and subscribe to my channel take care and stay safe